in agreement with those prayer requests this morning. No matter whether big or small, they all matter. They all matter to the Lord and they all matter to us. So we thank God for it. Now we're going to move expeditiously this morning as I need to release what I need to release. Um, just to reiterate again, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 4. Just to reiterate again, we will meet tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. So the first of every month, we are fasting. The first three days of every month from 6 a.m. to 6 p. We are doing nothing but water. Then from 6 p. to 6 a. We're doing raw vegetables and fruits. Raw vegetables and fruits. That's for the first three days of every month. And so this is the second day of August. So we are in the fast now. I'd like to invite y'all to please be a part of what is going on. You can't go wrong with fasting. I'm sorry. I know I know you want all that stuff, but you can't go wrong with fasting. I'm serious. It's something that is much needed. And, you know, with the way the CDC is allowing all this stuff to come through, we need to get ourselves in a position of being consecrated anyway. So the first three days of each month. The first three days of each month, we are fasting. So that's 6 a to 6 p, nothing but water. It's okay. We got enough body fat that'll hold us over. I promise you. Nobody passed away yesterday, I don't think. I hadn't heard of anybody passing away yesterday. So we're in day two now. And so from 6 p to 6 a, you can eat. You get you some bananas, get you some oranges, get you some mangoes, you know, get you some raw broccoli. And so you can have something, you know, it's just raw vegetables and, and fruit. So learn to discipline, teach your body to discipline itself. So that is where we are. And we're expecting God to do some awesome and some mighty things. Now to those of you that take medicine, if you have to have food with your medicine, then I leave that at your discretion with what you're to do. Don't tell anybody that I told you to fast and you didn't take your medicine because some of y'all will tell lies like that. I done got started already this morning. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I pulled back. Uh, you know, I, it's just the truth. I, I just had to put it out there. Some, of you, some folk will tell lies and, you know, and accuse somebody of something they did not say. So let me put those disclaimers out there to make sure that nothing happens of the sort like that. Use it at your discretion of what it is that you you know, that you need to do. But um, let's get ready to shake, rattle, and roll. And for those of you that sent in the $14 for um, for the walls to fall flat, got those transferred, got them transferred. Had to send so many, um, got a message from the credit union saying they done um, locked my zeal. And so I got to call them this morning to get, <laughs> to get that taken care of. So that means that we are moving, we are shake, rattling, and rolling. So listen, prepare, prepare, expect and prepare to see the walls falling flat, the things that you believe the Lord for. I am believing God that it is going to come to pass. Second Samuel chapter four on yesterday, the Lord gave us the word about turnaround. And this morning, the Lord is giving us a word about restoration. And if y'all will pray for me, Lord, I need to turn my phone down. If y'all will pray for me, um, I believe the Lord will literally speak to us this morning. Let me get this thing down. I do. I believe the Lord will speak to us this morning. If y'all will pray for me, if you'll just go ahead within yourself now and ask the Lord to use me, use me as his servant this morning to bless us. I believe that God literally will. So second Samuel chapter four, father, I thank you for who you are and what it is that you do. I'm excited in my spirit. I know you're about to lock me up. So I'm going to go ahead and just surrender. Okay. I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to go ahead and surrender and just go on in. All right. So second Samuel chapter four, I'm going to talk about restoration and we're going to walk this thing down. And so 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 4 says this right here. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. I'm going to show y'all some stuff in this text. Lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel and his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Okay. So this is Jonathan's son, which is Saul, the king, 
Jonathan is Saul's son, the king's son. And then that Mephibosheth is the king's grandson. He becomes lame of his feet due to the fact that his nurse, as war was breaking out, she began, she grabbed him and she began to run with him and it, and dropped him and he literally became lame of his feet. Okay, so now let's go over to 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. We're dealing with a lame issue. We're dealing with a situation where a nurse has dropped him. I need to talk to y'all right quick. Like before I go into 9, I need to talk to y'all right quick. Like about being hurt by those that should have protected you. Okay. All right. So listen, I, oh, 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 I, I need to talk to y'all about being hurt by those that should have protected you. Lord have mercy. I, I need to talk to you. Those of you that have been hurt by family members, Father, help me. I need to talk to y'all uh, this morning. Those of you that have been hurt by, by, by church you know, by some things that happen in church. I, I need to, I need to talk to you about those of you that have been hurt by, you know, a, a teacher that said something, you know, called you a name or, or made you feel as though you, you were too stupid to learn something or however the case may be, but being hurt by those that should have helped you. Please understand, you know, by context of Second Samuel verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 4, uh, he was hurt by his nurse nurse, which was a, a caregiver. But listen to this. The thing of it was, uh, she was picking him up to protect him from something. There was war raging out and she mistakenly had to have dropped him, literally had dropped him. Now, some translation uses the word drop, but some uses the word fail. And so it literally puts it in a context of having to help us to understand that just maybe this was an accident, you know, Not now, I do get it that some things happen intentionally. I do get it that some folk can be nasty intentionally. I do get that. I've been nasty intentionally at times before. Y'all thought I was going to lie about me, didn't you? That's what you get. I've been nasty intentionally before uh, as as well, you know. And so, but it goes to say here that uh, dropped and then there is a, a fail that it talks about. And this is the nurse, which is the caregiver of the child. War is about to break out. And she grew grabs the child to run with the child, which is to take the child to a place of safety. That is why I really believe that it was not really intentionally what happened to Mephibosheth because if she wanted him to get hurt, she could have left him in a position of where the war was breaking out and allowed him as a child to be killed. So just maybe uh, uh, this thing happened unintentionally. Uh, can I talk to y'all this morning for a few minutes, if you will, allow me to hear the Holy Spirit spirit and to translate what he's saying to us. Sometimes it's not intentionally what happens. It, it's not intentional. Uh, Sometimes you, you just get caught in the crossfire of something. It's really not intentional, but it, it's just the way things have happened now. Now, it's intentional by the enemy concerning certain things, but it's not intentional uh, by way of how things just happen to, to have played out. And so he finds himself literally dropped and the scripture goes to say that that he now becomes lame. And, and so let me talk to my lame people for a few minutes this morning. Something happened to you that really messed you up. Uh, uh, Delphine, be good this morning. I'm going to try to listen. Uh, something happened to you that literally just messed you up. It, 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 you know, it, it, it lamed you. You know, maybe you had a relationship that literally ended and it, it caused you to be lame. Maybe uh, there was uh, something that happened with maybe the passing of, of of someone and it caused a, a lameness to, to happen. You know, there, there was some type of heartbreak that caused a, a lameness to take place. And so um, Mephibosheth finds himself, uh, he's now part of royalty. Yeah, go ahead this morning. I am. Okay, so listen, the boy finds himself, he's part of royalty. Remember I told you his granddad was the king. So his, his dad literally was the prince. And so he is now an heir to a throne, but the boy finds himself 
himself, even though there's royalty on his life, he finds himself in a situation. God, uh, help me, Lord Jesus. Uh, he finds himself in a circumstance as to where he's now lame. Oh, is it going to ever work out for me? Oh, God, you don't know how bad they broke my heart. You don't know how bad my heart is shattered in uh, to a million pieces. Is it ever going to work out for me? And, oh, Lord, I thought that because uh, uh, this person was my daddy. Uh, uh, this person was my mama. I, you know, I, I didn't see this happening to me. Oh, God, how did this get like this? Uh, uh, just so I let you know uh, that trouble finds itself everywhere. Okay, I don't think y'all know that. But trouble finds itself. Delphine, come on. Trouble finds itself. Hey, you, you got me. Hold up, Lord. Back up for a second. You, 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 trouble finds itself everywhere. Everywhere. It doesn't matter from the rich house to the poor house, from the black house to the white house. It doesn't matter. Trouble finds itself everywhere. And trouble literally can haphazardly get into a place. Uh, and so Mephibosheth now has been dropped by the nurse. Literally has been dropped by the nurse, the caregiver. But it's really not intentional. I don't believe. It's just that some things happen. Some things go about in life. But what really got me was the fact that the boy was dropped and now they cast the boy into a place called Lodabar. Somebody pray for me this morning. I'll work the text if you are pray. Listen to me. The boy is cast now into Lodabar. Why did you have to put him in Lodabar? He was still the king's kid. Can I tell you this morning? I told y'all I'm talking about restoration. You still the king's kid? I don't talk. I, I want to jump out the window again. It's done got hot already. Look, listen, you still the king's kid. What God said about you is still so. You God help me. You don't you let nobody put you down in the bar. I ain't finished. Don't hang up yet. I promise you, you want me to get to the, the end of this thing. I promise you because I'm going to come get you this morning, okay? I'm coming at you this morning. I'm riding in to pick you up this morning. The situation done put you in loader bar. It's got you down and out because you got dropped because of a bad decision you made. Whatever I done made some myself. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God, a circumstance done put you in loader bar and it gets me about that. The boy was still the king's grandson. Lord, have mercy. But you gonna put him into a place of loader bar, which means a place of low decree, uh, which means he was cast away from everybody. Lord have mercy. As if he did not have uh, a king's title on his life. Uh, as if he did not have Lord Jesus uh, royalty on his life. Uh, as if the boy was not an heir, they put him down uh, into Loda bar. Listen, uh, let me tell you one more time. Uh, you are still valuable. God help me this morning. And I told y'all it was restoration. I think y'all think I came to play, but I came to slay. Listen to me. It was loaded, boy. God help me, please. You are still valuable, God. Huh? I know it hurt, but you are still valuable. Huh? I know you heard them talking about you, but you're still valuable. I know they turned their back on you, but you're still valuable. I know it was stupid what you did, but you're still valuable. You are still valuable. God help me this morning where the proud intercessors at. Lord Jesus, you are still valuable. And I come to get you this morning. Second Samuel chapter 9. Second Samuel chapter 9. Lord have mercy. You still valuable. Restoration has finally come. Father, I thank you. Verse 1 in chapter 9. Second Samuel chapter 9. It says, and David said, Mm. <laughs> Somebody cares enough about you. And Delphine said, uh, is there any that is left of the house of Saul <laughs> that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? I told you I was coming at you this morning. If you will hear me today and hear me with your heart, I done told you I'm coming to get you this morning. You don't have to stay in that place. God help me. Huh? I, you don't have to stay there. All right. There is a 
summons out for you. Uh, there is a decree that is out for you. There is a word looking for you, Lord have mercy, and the word is restoration. There is a word looking for you, and there is a young woman by the name of Delphine that is literally holding forth that word and literally searching you out to find you. Why? Because you are eligible for restoration. You are entitled to restoration, but you don't know what I did. I don't care what you did. You are eligible. Did you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost? Because if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, then you in trouble. But if you didn't blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, deliverance can be your portion. God can bring you out. Lord, have mercy. Restore you better than what you ever could be and use you for his glory. Come on, God. I do what you do, man, because you're awesome at what you do. I love you too. Okay, so listen, restoration is looking for you. There is a hit out on you. Lord, have mercy. David literally is looking for someone to show kindness to. Can I talk to y'all? Just give me a second to talk to you about people that really love God. People that really love God are looking for somewhere to show some kindness. Come on, Delphine. They're looking for somewhere to show some kindness. They ain't talking about they'll never change. They ain't going to never be nothing. They ain't going to never do nothing. That ain't the love of God. Like Shirley said, that ain't the work of the Lord. No, no, no. That is not the love of God. Or Jesus Christ, regardless of what you see. Or Jesus, regardless of what's done happen. A change can come. I went to bed. Lord have mercy. That Friday night somewhere in Saturday morning. From having smoking weed and out doing my thing. Woke up that Saturday, a sinner, huh? but woke up that Sunday, having done gave my life to the Lord. Huh? What a difference a day can make. Huh? Oh, Jesus, some of them said she won't ever change. Huh? And she'll never amount to anything. Huh? Uh, but I'm glad to say that I'm on my way huh? and I'm getting stronger. I shouldn't have said that. I want to cry now. Huh? I'm getting stronger every day. Huh? Lord, have mercy. Huh? A day changed my whole life. And can I tell you, huh? A day can change yours. I don't care what you did. I know what you did last summer. I don't care what you said. I heard about what you said. It does not matter at all because, oh God, God has the ability to restore. David is looking for someone to show kindness to. He said, there's got to be somebody that I can show kindness to. There's got to be somebody that I can be a blessing to of the house of Saul. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He says this. Now, verse 2 says, And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Ah, oh, thy Ziba. And he said, the ser- Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? I need to tell somebody, the Lord has forgiven you because of the stuff that you said. The Lord has forgiven you. I just heard that in the realm of the spirit. The Lord has been forgiven you because of the stuff that you said. See, listen, let me tell you what I hear. I got to work the text, but I got to obey God because the Lord is unlocking somebody. Listen to me. You said some stuff you shouldn't have said. You put your mouth, God help me. Somewhere you shouldn't have put your mouth. But the Lord said he's forgiven you, okay? The Lord has forgiven you. All right, Lord, help mercy. The Lord has forgiven you and there is kindness that is being shown unto you. God help me. Just go ahead with the kindness. You may not understand it, but go ahead with the kindness. See, it's hard to understand how people can be good to you when you know what you've done. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay because the love of God takes precedence over all of that. And so I needed to say that for someone because I I heard it. So the king is asking, is there not any left of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? Listen, 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 fix that stuff. Uh, it won't let me go. I'm trying to still read. Just go fix that stuff. Go to the, let them folk know you sorry. God, Lord, he, the Lord, what the Lord won't let me leave that alone. Look, just let them folk know that you sorry. God, help me. Uh, please, what can folks say? What, what, how dare anybody act like they can't forgive uh, unless they don't want to be forgiven? Uh, wait a minute. Don't worry about that. Free yourself. Uh, free yourself. Like the song say, free your mind and the rest will follow. Free your mind.
mind, okay? Free your mind. He says, I want to show some kindness uh, 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 of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has a son, and but he's lame on his feet. What difference do that make? Huh? What difference do that make because he's lame? Huh? What difference do that make because he is lame? Huh? He still got a title. He still has royalty. He still is the king's grandson. So what difference does that make? There will always be somebody to come with a but concerning things. Yeah, she did it, but whatever. Huh? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know she said she had to change, but whatever, man. Huh? Kill all of that. He said, but he's lame on his feet. And the king said, verse 4, unto him, where is he? See, the king said, I don't care. I'm trying to tell y'all about folk that love God for real. They don't care about that stuff. That stuff does not bother them at all because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You better understand it now. All have missed up. Lord, have mercy. You don't really know God till you done had to forgive something or somebody that told you up from the flow up. That's when the love of God really becomes real and I understand that that is the most treacherous and painful time because everything in you doesn't want to do it. But that is the time when the light of God is showing forth greater than anything. I told y'all this restoration today. I'm running three days calling what the Lord is saying. Now, first day was turn around. Today is restoration. We'll wake up tomorrow if it be the Lord's will to see what is said tomorrow. Oh, Jesus Christ, listen. Huh? And you don't know God until huh? you done had to forgive something huh? that literally could have told you up. Huh? Literally put stains all on you. Huh? Uh, but you got to forgive. It hurt. Huh? It hurt deep. Uh, but that is when God is really big uh, inside of your life. So David says, uh, where is he? Where is he? I want him lame and all. Where is he? Huh? I told y'all I was coming this morning. Listen, where is he? I want him lame and all. Don't worry about the fact that he lame. I, I still want him lame and all. Why? Because that boy still has royalty on him. I need to tell you this morning, I don't care what you did. You still got royalty. Royalty is still sitting there. God's love is yet there. God's hand is yet there. God's call is yet there. God's what he's chosen you to do in the earth is yet there. Okay, okay, it's yet there, all right? It's yet there. And so he, I want him, David said, where, 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 where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Mature, the son of Amuel in Lodabar. They done put him somewhere out the way. They acting like the boy has no value. But verse 5 says, and King David sent and fetched him out the house of Mature the son of Amuel from Lodabar. I told you I was coming this morning. And Delphine, Lord have mercy, and Apostle Lee has sent and come to fetch you out of the house of Lodabar this morning. I've come to get you this morning, y'all. I've come to get you to bring you to the table. Come to bring you back to the place where you first, God, Lord have mercy, at the cross where you first saw the light and the burdens of your heart were rolled away. I come to bring you back there because it was there by faith that you received your sight. Oh boy. And because you left happy, the enemy attacked you. Because you were moving for God, the enemy attacked you. But baby, I come this morning. I know hell is mad, but it don't matter to me. I done made a decision and I done promised him that I am I'm going to serve him until I die. Oh, baby, so it don't matter whether today, 20 years, 40 years, I plan on staying with Jesus. The best thing that I ever came across. Lord, have mercy. That might be why he ain't let me have no good old man because, Lord Jesus, that might blow my mind and take me away. God, look, I promise I'm going to do right. Okay, listen, I came this morning to let you 
to know that, that the Lord is there for you. The Lord is here. He is here. I come to get you this morning, to get you out of Lodabar. Come this morning to bring liberty. God help me. The Bible says that he was set at liberty. Woo! All those that are captives. And so the Lord has come this morning to set the captives free. God, thank you this morning. The Lord has come to put you at the table. Woo, baby. The scripture says that even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. But can I tell you, sweetheart, you don't have to eat crumbs from the table when you don't been called to sit at the table. God help me. You don't been called to sit at the table. And so David literally fetches Mephibosheth, brings him in. Oh, God help me, please. He brings him in and sets him at the table. This is the thing that gets me. Verse 6 says, now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul was come unto David, he fell on his face. That's what you see. That's the problem right there. That's the problem right there. Don't nobody want to humble themselves. Oh, Jesus Christ, nobody wants to say, hey, look here. I'm sorry about what I did. Oh, God. See, let me tell y'all what the devil will do. He'll cause you to keep looking at what was supposed to have been done to you so that you don't ever apologize. But let me tell you something about me. I don't mind apologizing. Sometimes I apologize to folk, and I know I really ain't did nothing, but I apologize if it's going to fix the relationship. I'll go ahead and, and apologize because why? Apologies is not something I'm afraid of. Apologies is not something that I stay away from. Matter of fact, let me show y'all right now. If it's any of you that are under the sound of my voice, if I've done anything to you, I apologize. Even if you felt like I did something to you, then I apologize. You see, it's just that simple for me because I love to be free. I don't like being bound. No, 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 no. The only time I want to be wrapped up and bound is when I get married. I want that joker to tangle me up real good. Real, real good. But I like being free. I like being free. So it's no problem. And the issue is, uh, is the, the lack of desire to fall upon the face. Uh, for see, Mephibosheth was uh, literally a place, a, 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 a king, of, he's the king's grandson, so he's in royalty. But notice what he does. He falls on his face. Why? Because David, you didn't have to come get me. Uh-oh. David, you didn't have to come get me. You didn't have to do that. You didn't. They had them cast me in the loader bar, had them put me away. You didn't have to come get me, but I'm glad you did. And because you did, I appreciate you, David. I love you, David. I appreciate you. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. Lord have mercy. Verse 7, David says unto him, Fear not. Get up, boy. For I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee. I told y'all it was restoration. I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continuously. Need I say any more to y'all this morning? Have you not heard the Holy Ghost yet? I'm about out of gas. I can't keep messing with you. Now, if you're smart enough to catch what God done said, what the Lord done release this morning. But now notice it comes with, once he comes to get you, fall on your face. Don't come in now with no silly stuff talking about, well, you know, you said such and such, and if you hadn't said so, that's not how you repair relationships. That's not how you fix things. You repair relationships by uh, uh, saying, I'm sorry, you understand, for my part in what I did. I'm, I'm sorry, and then you reconcile it so the enemy is mad, but you don't go in talking about, well, you know, if you hadn't did this and had to see that's a negative, trying to take a ne negative into a positive, that ain't gonna ever work, okay? All right, don't ever do that. That's not smart to do. Don't take a negative into a positive. If you got somebody and they cutting a fool really, really, really bad, don't you send nobody in there that they got a problem with because they gonna cut the fool all the more. You no, 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 no. You do not render justice with a negative when you're trying to get a positive. So Mephibosheth said, hey, fell on his face and literally said, hey, 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 you didn't have to do this, David, but I'm so glad that you did. Now, 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 now.
now I've gotten my position restored uh, and my ability to sit at the king's table. Can I tell y'all this morning, sweetie, 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 hear me, you at the king's table. I came and got you this morning. I done came and got you this morning. You're at the king's table. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And may restoration be your portion. May restoration be your portion. Not only for things that are past, but may restoration be with you all the days of your life to continue or to restore you. Because as long as we live, there may be errors we make. And restoration would need to be our portion. So as the scripture says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Restoration, that's what that is. That is synonymous of restoration. So may restoration continue to be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I bless you on today. Thank you for allowing me to share with your precious people. Dude, I thank you the most amazing thing that there is. You're the most amazing entity that the earth could ever have. You are God, man. You are God, and beside thee there is no other. I love you, man. I do. I love you, and I am so grateful for what it is that you do. And may everyone under the sound of my voice experience restoration in the areas where restoration needs to come. May there be relationships restored. May there be backsliders healed, God. Literally, Father, may there be relationships between uh, kids and parents. May there be relationships fixed between husbands and wives. and You know, just, just uh, wherever, God, between people that were friends that, you know, had some kind of mishap that take that took place. Let there be restoration in places, God, because the earth needs you. The earth needs you. The earth needs your love and your kindness to be shown towards us. We're all, we have all fallen into the position of Lodabar at some point in our life, and we need kindness to be shown unto us in order to restore us back to the table. So I thank you. Be God. Be God all throughout the day blessings be upon you all. I love you so much. I will see y'all in the morning at 7 a.m. in this same place. Walk in your turnaround and your restoration. It has been decreed over you in Jesus' name. 7 a.m. in the morning in this same place. Have a great day. I love you.